Hello and welcome. Um, my name is Yuri Mees and I'll be your moderator today. And thank you for tuning in to this second edition of Artists in Conversation, a new series by Dutch Culture that's all about learning more what's happening in countries around the world and what the cultural climate is like. Uh, for each edition, we take a deep dive into a specific context uh, of a cultural region or, or, uh, or country. We speak to experts and we offer a stage to talented artists. But above all, we invite artists from uh, abroad and the Netherlands for a personal one-on-one -on -one conversation. Today, we're exploring the connections and bonds between the Netherlands and Australia and have invited artists from both countries. Our first guest for today is Nardi Simpson, who will share with us her perspective on the state of culture in Australia. For today's conversations, we've invited Janet Lawrence, Maria Verstappen, Emma Fielden, Richard Bell, and Brian Elstock to talk about their interests and experiences. But first, let's go to Nardi Simpson. Are you with us? Yes, thank you very much for having me. Hello and welcome. Thanks for being with us. Nardi, you are a Uwalari uh, storyteller and performer. Uh, and uh, rib, uh, Aboriginal Australian people from, I think, the uh, northwest of what is now New South Wales. Is that right? That's right. We're, we're um, about 10 hours northwest of Sydney. Okay. Hey, and Nardi, you created a piece for us, as I understand. Yes, I, I um, wanted to speak specifically about where I'm from and maybe using that very small focus in trying to understand uh, that there are communities like that all over Australia that are beautiful makers and artists. All right. Well, um, uh, uh, would, you, would you want to share uh, your, uh, your piece? Fantastic. Thank you. Yamamalia. Hello, friends. I'm really excited to have this opportunity to speak to you all about things I love deeply. And thank you so much for listening today. But how do I condense these things into five minutes? How do I give you a snapshot of who I am, where I'm from, and how I move in the world in such a short space of time? I've spent a lifetime trying to make sense of these, these things in my own life, and they are amongst the greatest pursuits of any life, I believe. Culture, country, relationship, artistry, belonging, and practice. So rather than an overview, it is perhaps best for me to focus deeply on one thing, for in that, I believe, is reflected all that I aspire to and come from. I'm a Yuwalarai woman. My homeland is special. It makes me who I am. Uwalari country, as I mentioned, is 700 kilometres northwest from where I am now in Sydney's inner western suburbs, and that's a 10-hour drive from the city over the Great Eastern Mountain Range that runs along our entire eastern coastline through undulating and fertile ranges and then on to the flat, open floodplain. Uwalari country is river country. It is also a place of extremes. It houses a complexity of opposites, searing, stifling, skin-melting heat and shy, snaking rivers and freshwater soaks, fertile and rich black soil plains and iron-red, steel-hard dirt ridges, harsh, untamed, unforgiving scrub, hiding opaline, crystalline, gemstone pockets. And finally, sweet tea-coloured winding waters and bubbling sulfuric hot water springs. Uwalari is beautiful and it is complex and a great and generous teacher for me. She is forever showing her opposite sides, counterpoint and contrasting, yet always, always in harmony. 
Hers is a lesson of understanding and patience that I cherish in my life. She is also the ultimate example of leaving space for that which you are not. And by that, I mean Yuwalarai country successfully integrates absence into her landscape. She creates and leaves holes deliberately. These holes are not of nothingness. They are spaces of contradiction and counterpart. Rather than these holes being sites of problem and conflict, it is within them that complexity and empathy reside. If harmony and difference is reflected in the grand spreading lands of Yuwalarai country, then that's all the encouragement I need to be the same. As a result, as a Yuwalarai woman, an artist and an Australian, my country decrees I am not only to have a strong sense of self, I must also allow space for that which I am not. A beautiful, lyrical, culture-led way to move in the world, perhaps. It is also a challenge, especially when the political, the creative and the physical environment has, for a time in this country and around the world, been centred around withdrawal, disconnection and self-preservation. I don't think it too far of a stretch to say that dedication to a cultural or Yuwalarai way of living is counterintuitive to our modern contemporary pandemic-shaped world. Yet, as have my ancestors before me, I have faith this way can prevail. First Nations people in Australia and indeed around the globe are no strangers to the devastation of pandemic. Our peoples have seen and survived this times before. And we have the blueprint for survival and renewal after times such as this. If anything, for me, the pandemic has forced Australians to rethink the importance of connection to each other and the places we love. Once again, Yuwalarai teaches, in the denial of the very things we cherish, we feel its importance in our lives. Music and literature, culture and country are the ways we will revive after this period of fear and sorrow. And elders and artists will lead the revival. The pandemic has also listened to Yuwalarai country. Sickness will create space for great art. And so the circles and cycles of culture and life and art and making continue to revolve. When I am unable to physically travel to my homelands, I need only sing a song of it or speak its language or write of its magnificence and I am instantly transported there. My body in the city and my spirit drifting in Yuwalarai, 700 kilometres kilometers away. Such is the beauty of our culture, the strength of our country and the power of our art that I can be both here and absent at the same time. Miru, thank you. Miru, do I... Is that thank you? Gi oh giru is giru. like um it's like a finished and that's all. Yeah. Ah, it's like the end. Uh, yeah, the end. Yeah. Right, that was beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh I wonder now you speak of uh withdrawal and survival and renewal, all of these um concepts of of uh movement and change. Uh what if we? What, what if I would ask you, like a, I think a difficult question for a storyteller, but what if I would ask you to try to sum up the current cultural climate in uh, Australia in just one word? What would that be? <laughs> it's like the meaning of life. If I get this right, I'll be on a winner. Um, the word that comes to my mind is dreaming. Hmm. We understand it as Aboriginal people as... Um, the time of creation, past, present, future, all all wrapped up in the same time. Uh, and, you know, perhaps for non-Indigenous people, dreaming is something that you think about, that you wish for, that is unattainable in a way, but still incredibly important in how you move. So maybe dreaming works, works for black and white Australians. 
Very beautiful. Nice. Dreaming. All right. Let's try to stick with that. Uh, thank you, um, Nardi, for your time, for being with us. Um, and uh, I'll uh, I would now like to invite uh, Janet and Maria to join us for, uh, for our conversation. Uh, Janet Lawrence is an artist working with science, nat nature, and imagination uh, through installation works. And she exhibits in Australia, but also internationally. And our second guest is Maria Verstappen. Uh, Maria, you work as a duo eh, with your husband, Edwin Driessen, uh, and your work focuses on expressive possibilities that physical, chemical, and computer algorithms offer, specifically in how images are uh, generated and, and, and processed. Um, Maria, Janet, um, this is Artisan Conversation, so the floor is all yours. You both brought an image you'd like to share with each other, um, so uh, we're going to start off with uh, with uh, Janet's image. So it's exactly how it is outside right now from my house. Wow. It's a wild garden that I've gardened a for sure. It's not my land, but I garden it. And um, over 15 years, it's created an amazing world of um, creatures of all sorts and... Uh, um, amazing life of plants so it's become very much a teacher for me and more recently especially at night yeah wow that's beautiful yeah. also with the the view further on the water a mm. little aisle and then in far in the background i see city city light yeah. mm. that's right wow. it's right and so the water is very very much part of my my everyday life. I walk the harbour's edges and um, you know it's it's always it's always been in my life and mm. then of course this world of uh, plants so it's it's a really the basis I think to my work is this sort of force of nature around yeah. me and being wow. immersed within it. Oh it's, it's, it's funny this is, yeah <laughs> It's a, it, it's not just an image. I think it's a, it's a thoughtful image that you made of your garden. I mean, it's yeah. a, yeah, it's a real big photographic picture of of, uh, of your garden, and you have lights in your garden so that the pl plants are, are yeah. bright and yes, yeah, some yes, yeah, some. Yeah. But it goes yeah. a long way down the hill. It goes mm. much further. You can't see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Well, I I, I was um, exploring your your work yesterday, and um, and one of the of the projects you, you did in the past was about uh, the matter of masters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, so, uh, in in your view, everything starts with the the nature and the matter that we can find mm -hmm. there. And culture is, in fact, something that is deeply intertwined with the matters of, of, of nature, in your view, I think. Yeah, I like to think of um, matter as being very different from the idea of materials. Like matter is the stuff of the world, the stuff of nature, as it were. And then, then we, we, we create that into the materials of culture. And um, for me, it's very much a starting point that I think it's come out a lot of my very early work was related to alchemy. And I think it's very much um, a language deep, deep within that I use a lot still. And particularly in that Matter of the Masters um, project, uh, which was a beautiful connection with Holland, of course, and um, all of those uh, pigments and you know, from all the, the the sources for them was fascinating. And the, particularly now I'm doing a big project with 200 rocks <laughs> and I'm thinking a lot about how I was using all of those those um, pigments from various rocks in that project, you know, mm. it's kind of a nice connection. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I really liked also the, the way you visualize this, the, the thematics that you are engaged with. Like uh, your installations are so, I don't know, it's, 
it's scientific, but also there is always this mise en scène in the space that you are mm -hmm. really working on. It's not just showing something, but it's like a, a whole, like a fairy tale world you are you are creating with your displays and the translucent yeah. materials. Also in this uh, exhibition of the matter of the masters, you use the colors of the plants or the, yeah. I don't know, or the pigments in a, in a very specific way. Um, yeah, yeah. Can, you, can you talk about that also a little bit to... Um, yeah, well, I wanted to order them, so it was a bit, order the colours, so it became a bit like um, a spectrum of these colours and then the sources of them. So the, the whole thing is quite scientific, but, of course, it's it's also a little bit lyrical too because I add all this other... I add images of fragments of the images of the works, so they start yeah. telling stories of these of these artworks and then the scientific laboratory glass and mirrors that start to create a kind of ambiguous space within yeah. all of the vitrines yeah and so i mean i take away that i guess the, the rigor of the science <laughs> that i have a lot of chaos in my work mm -hmm. and i kind of rely on that <laughs> to move into but yeah. essentially i really want to create uh an an a sort of a space that one can enter into so that they can experience the work in a quite other peripheral sort of ways as well as it's not it's not purely a visual thing you know yeah yeah, yeah. so so the strange thing about the photo of the garden it looks like a picture but my work really rarely looks like a picture <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. yeah but do but, you do you do you um also say in your work that that and also show with the picture of your garden that everything in culture starts with the environment and that each culture is defined by its landscape by its ecology by the matters that are but also on a spiritual level that is in in there or well, I guess I feel it is because I focus on that. You know, I mean, I find it hard to um, to find another way to enter into cultures, um, um, and I'm, I'm I just have a natural response to to the to the matter of 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 the world. Yeah, and, um, and I think now I'm very much aware of it. Also, in this you know period of climate change, how dramatically it's changing and what we're doing to the world. And so I guess it's um, kept me very much focused on that because now I am looking much more at its fragility. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, I've seen really your, your videos really beautiful about the, the coral reef. Yeah. Um, which I really like a lot because I'm, I'm working on a project now where I also uh, investigate uh, the idea of that in the Netherlands, maybe in the future, we can also have a coral reefs when we have the um, when we have the climate change yeah, and when exactly. we, our land will be flooded again. Yeah. Uh, we might have uh, coral reefs in the future. You, so, yeah, yeah. So I really liked your approach to to this type of very close filming of 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 the. Nautilus, or what was mm. it? These mm. uh, animals, the sea animals. Yes. Really, really nice. Did you do? Well, did you dive there? Yes, yes, I did. I well, I had the invitation for for the Paris Climate Talks to make an artwork for artists for Paris Climate. So I immediately thought of the Barrier Reef as being uh, the obvious thing that we're looking at measuring the climate change. And uh, so I, that was a hospital I created for it. So it, they're all on life support. So yeah. it gives a, it, the excuse to bring in all that, you know, scientific equipment and everything and nothing's living naturally. And then in my videos, there is some early films where things are living and, fr you know, healthy and everything. And then there's the other video it gets juxtaposed with it, how it is currently now. And yeah. And most of my videos are about 
they show very closely the plants and the animals in in um, distress or, or, or you know in in a state of like um, life support yeah you know? yeah yeah, mm -hmm. so, yeah. So, uh, you know, I always try and combine those sort of films because they create the much more intimate um, feeling of what's happening inside that environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in Australia, and uh, I, I, I have the feeling that for a long time there is a lot of engagement with the, the nature and how it has to be preserved or taken care of. I think more probably... A, or for a longer time than here in Europe, I, 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 I think. Well, I think the funny thing is we're so recently colonised and um, we realised what a disaster we created with our colonisation. And that's really just becoming acknowledged, really. Yeah. And but, but for a long time people were recognising it and realising that we had such an extraordinary nature here that the indigenous peoples had cared for so uh, and maintained and and suddenly now we've you know our our society and colonization along with um along with um climate change it's it's really getting drastic and because we have so many animals and plants there's massive extinctions happening yeah, and, you know this may have happened a much longer time ago in Holland. If you know what I mean. With, yeah, sure. Yeah, and, sure. and it's just that it's for us. It's now we're we're seeing the damage yeah. of what colonization does. Yeah. So that's why it's a really um, it's a very important time at the moment because we are recognizing that we have to go back and look at how indigenous peoples cared for the land and I think it's very exciting time to um, to be observing this recognition mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. but how about what your photo of moving into <laughs> yeah let's yeah. look at uh, the picture that I have uh, uh, sent aha uh -huh. so I haven't seen this by the way I haven't seen it no, I didn't see your picture before neither. Oh, but okay. Yeah, so um, this this picture needs a, a, a little explanation because it's uh, something that is uh, changing over time because it's a machine that is caressing uh, the person that is laying on this on the on the in the grass, mm -hmm. and the whole installation. Of course, it's like a garden that is taken inside uh, the sp a space. And uh, a person is lying there and is uh, being caressed with a very small tassel that is moved oh, around okay. by a machine. So, um, so here we have um, we have made this work already like 18 years ago, mm -hmm. but suddenly it became um, <clears throat> actual because of the COVID pandemic. Uh, that we cannot touch each other, and um, so this show was a bit around the, the all the the aspects of a pandemic, and um, so this whole idea of um, of you know um, being caressed by by a machine became became an interesting idea. So, yeah, it, it, it's a, it sets up a lot of questions. I must say. It's yeah. um, it's really interesting, but uh, especially with this um, 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 strange figure lying there, and then all these fallen logs of wood. It's really quite um, quite curious. And are they yeah. on this, um, this kind of velvet uh, grass on this? You yeah, know, and the, the real outside is 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 there as well. Well, the, the idea of, of taking grass and the logs inside was actually an idea of the, of the exhibition designer because this installation with the, with the caress, with the machine, we can also install it on a normal bed and mm -hmm. without all the things on the, on, on the, on the floor, without the, the garden, actually. So right. this was yes, more yes. idea of the designer of the exhibition, but mm -hmm. we liked it because somehow it, it, 
it becomes like a surrealistic uh, world uh, yeah. in, in this building. So um, yeah, we were quite I can see that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And and how does it relate to um, other works that you're working on now? Well, actually, this work is quite exceptional because this is on the level of Dutch, actually, and all our other works are related to the field of the visual. So, all right. um, but uh, this this uh, this tickle tickle salon, it's called to the work. Mm -hmm is something that me and my partner developed because uh, we are interested in the uncontrolled and the self-organized. So, uh, and, and I think um, that's where also our work connects, I think, because we are both inspired by nature. Because yeah. in nature you find this uh, infinite source of uh, examples of the uncontrolled and the bottom-up kind of order that is constructed all the time and deconstructed all the time. Yeah. So with the tickling, of course, you, you need to have a machine that does not uh, repeat a movement, but changes all the time because that's when it's nice, when the feeling on the skin is nice, is when you cannot predict where a hand, or in this case, the tassel is moving to. So we had to invent a robotic machine, but also uh, an al algorithm that never repeats its movement and that is always kind of, um, yeah, that always uh, uh, is, is uh, surprising you where it's going to. Mm. So, um, and in our visual works, we actually try to achieve the same with um, with visual means. So we we invent a process that mm -hmm. when you set it, when you uh, activate it, it can create by itself uh, many, many things. And each time when you start the process again, it will come up with something new. So it's not a repetition of, uh, of a specific process, but it's a process that allows for a lot of different directions each time. So, and yeah, so this idea of self-organization um, is for us and the uncontrolled is important in our visual work as well. Although, and you uh, mostly using technology um, to determine a lot of your works as well. So I wonder how much um, the technology um, is, it drives it and how much you determine yourself. Um, yeah, well, a, a part of our work is, is really working with technology, um, but we, we, we really try to understand the mm. world in terms of process. Yeah. And then we, we invent not a simulation of the of the world, but we try to to somehow make a process that is inspired by the world. But uh, because you work with a machine and you work with the the pixels and the, and voxels, you you create you have you create a world in the machine. But there is a parallel. It, it's like. The, it's a parallel world that is inspired by processes in nature, like, for instance, cell division or evolution. You mm -hmm. can make uh, virtual uh, ver um, forms of that uh, mm -hmm. in the machine. So for us, it's to try to understand the world and then make something to see if it works that way, if, if we mm -hmm. envision it in the right way and then create create something but also we learn uh, we, we sometimes do experiments with the uh, plants we made yeah. for instance a living herbarium where the plant oh, yeah. grows would, in, in almost yeah. flat form so yeah. this is no there is no technology involved there but we also regard um the plant as a as a sentient being that mm. um mm. that um yeah, that we can learn from also when we want to engage with um, uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning, mm -hmm. we can learn a lot of nature 
And so, for, for instance, we are not so much interested in the, in not only in the in the human brain, but mm. in the intelligence of plants and yeah. other organisms in that. Mm -hmm. I responded to that work too because I'm sort of really interested in that intelligence and and I, I I was very drawn to that work to see how they were how they were forming and growing and yeah yeah that was uh, that was uh, we were very curious to see that many plants uh, were doing quite well in in almost two dimensions uh, yeah. yeah yeah they yeah. they did very well great it's great to <clears throat> learn so much from plants but also from you uh, what an inspiring conversation uh, you've been having about a lot of technology, but also still some dreaming, I think, as Nardi pointed out. Thank you. Yeah, so yeah, it's true. Yeah. No, there's mm -hmm. more to talk about, I'm sure. We'll yeah, <laughs> 20 minute, minutes is too short to have like a, a yeah. good uh, conversation. Good but uh, yeah, I hope we can continue sometime. Yeah, I'd like to do that. Yeah, yeah. That's great. <laughs> New connections. Hey, thank you so much for uh, for your conversation. Now, um, Janet, uh, to stay with you for a second, you, yeah. you also to nominate a another like talented artist from Australia who you feel our viewers should meet and should see. Could you briefly tell us who you uh, who you nominated and uh, and why? I nominated El Emma Fielden because I've always found her work to have a mystery to it and also a poetic aesthetic and a clean sort of minimalism. And I find it curious that she uses a great array of materials and matter, as I'm interested in, but she creates, a, for me anyway, the whole content feels very much about immateriality and and um, impossibility <laughs> and I, I I don't really know whether <laughs> that's the right introduction to give her but I always love the curiosity I feel with her work and um, and engagement with its with its um, mystery and uh, sense of um, Oh, you know, a, a almost um, cosmic, but but in minimal form. All right. So well, let's 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 see. Um, uh, let's see, because uh, Emma, uh, she sent us a brief clip to introduce herself. Also, uh, so let's see what we recognize. Uh, let's roll the clip. Thank you so much, uh, Janet, for this moment. Yeah. Hi, my name is Emma Fielden and I am an artist based in Sydney, Australia. Uh, thanks to everyone at Dutch Culture for having me today and thank you Janet for inviting me to take part. I'm very happy to be here. So I work across a few mediums, installation, sculpture, drawing and performance and I like to think of my practice as seated at a meeting point between science and poetics. I'm interested in the idea of infinity from perspectives of mathematics, cosmology and philosophy. And I'm particularly focused on the ideas of infinite divisibility and coalescence. You know, and I, I muse on these concepts from very, very large scales to the very smallest of scales. So for example, the merging of galaxies, the coalescence of bubbles, the collision of subatomic particles, the merging of drawn lines. But I suppose ultimately, you know, all these, this kind of thinking becomes quite metaphoric for me as I'm always trying to bring these concepts back to, you know, to the human experience and to human relationships, uh, particularly considering relationships between two individuals and, you know, the, and the distance that might exist between them, you know, asking questions like, can we truly have a shared experience? Can we really connect or coalesce? You know, can you get inside another person's head or are we ultimately separated by this infinitely divisible and uncrossable distance? 
And actually, the work just behind me here is a good example of this. It's a drawing I made last year called The Veil, and it's after René Magritte's famous painting, The Lovers. I'm sure you're all very familiar with it. It's the painting of uh, the man and the woman, both their heads covered by white veils, leaning in towards each other, you know, heads touching, almost touching, um, just separated by you know, the thin veils that they wear. Um, you know, and my drawing uh, visualises the veil itself, so the veil that might drop down, that might exist between two people, like, you know, like a veil between worlds, I guess, that uncrossable distance that I was talking about before. And um, in my drawing, I describe that distance as a tiny decimal number, which I've drawn out by hand, one numeral at a time. So what you're looking at, I guess, now at a distance is, you know, when you look at the work, is essentially a black square. Maybe it looks like white noise or even perhaps an abstracted starscape. But if you were to zoom in and look really closely at it, what you'd see is rows and rows of numerals. So each row is a millimetre high and it starts at the top hand corner and with a zero followed by a decimal point then you know rows and rows of tiny zeros and then a single number one toward the end followed by more zeros so essentially it's a tiny number an infinitesimal number describing an infinitesimal but uncrossable distance that might exist between two individuals who are intimately connected so I'm talking to you today, this evening, from my home. Um, I live in Annandale in, a, in an apartment. Um, Annandale is a suburb in the inner west of Sydney, not far from the harbour. And I've been working from home for the last four or five months while I'm in between studios, which has been interesting. Um, I am used to sharing studio space with other artists. I've done so for the last five years and I've really been missing the company, you know, the daily company of other artists. So um, lucky enough to be moving to a new studio next month, Shirley Street Studios in Marrickville, which is not far from my home here. And um, yeah, really looking forward to that. So yeah, and in, in the meantime, um, what I'm working on now, I have a solo show and performance series on at the moment in Sydney called The Bells. Um, the project is supported by the New South Wales government through Create New South Wales and uh, my gallerist, Dominic Mersch Gallery. And uh, it's a presentation of two performance works, including my newest work, which is called The Bells. Um, so The Bells is a performance work for two people. So again, you know, using on ideas of um, relationships between two people and the distance and maybe crossovers between them. Um, and the performance happens alongside the tolling of church bells. So there's actually a church next door to my exhibition space. Um, yeah, look, uh, there's probably too much to go into to describe the work now, but please um, check out my website. There's a great essay on the work by Alana Irwin and images, which will give you some good insight into that work. I'd love to share it with you. So yeah, that's um, a bit of insight and a glimpse of my practice. Um, thanks for watching. Bye. Hey, hello, Emma. Thank hi. you for joining us. Hi, hi. Hey, um, what a great uh, introduction. Now, it strikes me that your work somehow um, is a lot about distance, right? About mm. distance between uh, galaxies, but also between people. Um, our topic today is, of course, international collaboration and how uh, cultural contacts from the Netherlands and, uh, uh, in this case, Australia can relate or can't relate. Uh, is that something you, you relate to in your work, also geographical distance between working in different places? Yeah, it's that's an interesting question, actually. And I... Been giving it some thought. It's funny. I I, I grew up with uh, um, my immediate family in Australia, but my extended family over the other side of the world. So I have this sense of um, connection at a distance, quite naturally. I think in my life since I was a child. So um, 
yeah, the, this sense of distance across countries doesn't, doesn't feel too present for me and doesn't feel such a distance, I guess. Hmm. And um, your own context, uh, uh, Australia, how does that influence your work, you think? Mm. Do, you live, do you live in the country of dreams, as we started talking about, or is, is it a very different place for you, and how does it influence who you yeah, are? Look, I mean, I don't think that my direct environment, you know, in, influences my work as such. I mean, of course it influences my life as a person because I'm here, but I think my work comes more from the imagination and more from thinking than it does from my direct environment i think i'm i'm thinking outside of the you know outside the context of the planet even sometimes you know staring at the stars and imagining you know very distant realities maybe our our galaxy then as a as a place uh, right yeah yeah definitely yeah. now emma um you also have a show on at the moment. I would say feel free to give it a plug. Uh, yeah, where sure. should we go? So I have a show on at the moment in Sydney, um, in the Sydney CBD uh, at 812B George Street, um, which is just near Central Station in Sydney. It's actually a pop-up exhibition space that is next door to um, a beautiful old sandstone church. Um, and the show is basically... Two performances. So, as an exhibition, when the when the performances aren't on, it's basically performance spaces. So, very it's a very minimal looking exhibition until you know myself and my performer until our bodies enter the space and sort of activate the space through performance. Mm. That's great. That's hopefully our viewers will have a chance to go and see you soon uh, with uh, with uh, more travel possible. Okay. So, uh, Emma, thank you so much. For joining us today, Thank um, you. and for uh, for your uh, your introduction, now we'll go to our second conversation with Richard Bell and Brian Elstock. Richard Bell is one of Australia's most significant artists. His work explores the complex artistic and political problems of Western colonial and indigenous art production. Brian is a visual. Uh, artist, an illustrator, painter, a children's book writer and connector between all sorts of creatives and storytellers. He is also part of the art collective Laurie Foley McLean. Richard, Brian, so great that you could join us today. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, the floor is all yours for your, uh, for your conversation. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Yeah. King Richard. <laughs> hey, Brian, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you. Been busy, but uh, but very good. Uh, oh, wow. I see uh, images loading up. Oh, right, it's your okay. studio. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, um, it's a painting. Just seeing that. I'm making paintings of protests you know, from around the 70s and 80s. Um, and it's... I, I just wanted to do that, and, and what came out of that was that there was, um, oh, like this guy here is one of the the heroes of our of our movement here. You know, like he set up you know, medical the man, service, the man in the front with the, yes, with the afro, yeah, yeah, with the the fro. You know, like um, he he set up uh, Aboriginal medical clinics all around the country. You know, like you know, for Aboriginal people. You know, like. Um, and they were, you know, you know, staffed by Aboriginal people, you know, like, and they you know, got them to, you know, be able to run their own um, their medical clinics and that sort of thing. So, and in all these these uh, paintings that I have, the, you know, they've, there's all these heroic figures, sort of thing. Mm. So, um, I'm I've sort of inadvertently turned into a history painter. <laughs> <laughs> it's needed. And uh, I always loved your guy's flag. It's amazing. Did you see that yeah. Taika Waititi um, uh, Maori uh, director yeah. that, that he put? Um, so he he um, he directed the, the, this Marvel Studios movie Thor Ragnarok, and he yeah. has like this alien spaceship that that flies like this at some point, and it's actually your guy's flag. So he <laughs> he asked the prop people to. Just use these colors, and he 
they just flipped it into uh, uh, the Aboriginal flag. It was amazing. Yeah, um, I haven't seen that. I know you're a big fan of Marvel. I am, I am as a child. Yeah, yeah. Comic books and um, uh, cartoons, they um, they always had like this moral to them. Um, the, the, the creators were oftentimes, not all uh, cartoons, of course. The, the, the Looney Tunes from back in the day were very racist. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. but, but other cartoons, they, they really did a lot of inclusion, actually. And, yeah. uh, and uh, comic books as well. So yeah, well, we're, yeah, that's true. Well, one of my friends here, um, mm -hmm. he's, he's one of the great drawers, great artists of this country, um, Vernon Arkey. He, he learned how to draw by you know, looking at, at comics and that sort of thing. Me too. Um, he's a big fan. Of, oh, right. So he's a big yeah, fan yeah. of Marvel as well. So. It's it's actually like Saturday morning cartoons and comic books are are like my um, art school. Yeah, oh well, um, I learned to read, like, <laughs> you know, reading comics and like sort of things. So it was it was hard, you know, coming from an Aboriginal reserve, you know, like having to go into into a school, you know, like a, a white school, and you know, with all these white kids and shit, you know, so. Um, um, like the the pictures were a relief, you know, like um, from yeah. Um, so yeah, um, so it's, it's it's great that like I I go back to it. I I'm, I use the Liechtenstein thing. I appropriate the Liechtenstein uh, comic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Amazing. We did that in um, Amsterdam as well. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was such a. A great experience. I'm like, um, I've, I've never, you know, it was. experienced yeah. anything like it um, anywhere else. I'm like, um, so I'm really proud to have been involved with that. You know, and to, to see that thing happen was was wonderful. Yeah, for for us too. Uh, and and when I say us, I, I also mean uh, uh, Farida Sadok, who you know yeah. very well as well. Um, yeah. It, that that period is, I, I think it's pretty game changing for us both because we were always already busy uh, yeah. creating stuff, but we were oftentimes uh, well, Farida was was uh, we were both in the the hip hop scene mostly that people know us from. Like I did a lot of album covers for for rappers, and she was always uh, very uh, strong into fashion and creating. Um, um streetwear and stuff like that but because of the bell invites uh the project that has your name in it um <laughs> we uh we were noticed more uh yeah. by uh gatekeepers let's say let's yeah. let's call them that yeah. they're like oh these people are interesting too where <laughs> where, where did they come from <laughs> yes Ooh. Yeah, um, well, that's so often the case. You're like, um, um, the we always overlook the local. You know, like in in searching for the the, the exotic other. You know, um, yeah, 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 so to speak. So, you know, um, and well, that was part of um, um, my efforts in in trying to overcome that. You know, like, um, and showing you know, <laughs> these people how, how to overcome. You know, that problem is so that when you do go somewhere, you know, can include you know, the, the local people um, in your project. You know, so, you know, um, well, then um, you get a big crowd there too. <laughs> this is very true. It's, it's like this ink stain that everyone uh, becomes a, a part of the story of the narrative. So everyone's yeah. proud, and everyone tells their friends. We tell their friends. So yeah. uh, people come for you. People come for Emery. People come for Farida. Exactly. People come for me. People come for University of Color, and uh, yeah. and it's funny because I, I worked in theater uh, as a PR person for very uh, very long, uh, like twelve years, um, and that's exactly what we did as well. We always. Um, got multiple people uh, who are 
courageous and, and very creative and very dope um, to be part of our, um, our plays. And uh, that's why our uh, crowd was always so diverse. Oh, that's that's fantastic! That's fantastic. Um, I'm, I'm, well, uh, it's, it's it's inclusiveness. You know, like um, you know, like um, our, our lives you know, like, uh, have been marked by you know ex being excluded. You know, so mm -hmm. the the last thing I want to do you know, like in my life is is to be that. You know, like uh, I'd, I'd much rather be you know inclusive. You know. You know, um, involving other people, um, you know, like um, it, it shares the it shares the load. You know, like uh, not only just brings um, you know, the, the audience, but it, you know, like the, the, the load is shared. Plus, you know, the, the benefits are shared. You know, it's part of our culture here. You know, like uh, there is a culture of sharing. It's very strong. You know, still, yeah, people. Um they they find it hard to share here sometimes. Yeah, yeah. They're well, thinking they're losing something from themselves when they yeah. uh, get more people involved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, but you're actually uh, gaining something. So yeah, well, um, I've got a, a show uh, at the Tate next year. Um, I, well, I'm hoping that it goes ahead. You know, like, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm, I want I want to involve the community and you know, like. Uh, you know, as much as I can, or like a, or what I did, you know, like uh, in Amsterdam, you know, like, um, you know, uh, was um, I, I, I want to do something similar to, to Bell Invites um, there. You know, like, uh, um, I really want to be able to go, you know, to to Great Britain and, and spend some time there, you know, like to to engage more with the community, yeah, you know, much more deeply. Than, so um, I was very, very lucky um, there in Motsen, like, um, uh, you know, um, I, the young woman I was, I was uh, working with, um, she did a fantastic job. You know, like, um, I gave her a brief and she just, you know, uh, overachieved on that and delivered this you know, magnificent program, you know, like, um, so I'm, I'm very proud. I'm very proud to, to have been involved. I'm, I'm so glad that you know that, that you know she chose you and, and Farida you know, to be in, involved. You, know, like, um, you mean with, Vivian? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Vivian. Yeah, uh, yeah Vivian. I, I owe her a lot as well. Yeah. 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 Well, um, yeah, she just got the job done. You know, like, um, you know, um, she. You know, chased up the the, the shows. It, it, it was it was fantastic. Like um, um, it was a great team effort. I think. Like um, yeah, it was amazing. I I, I have nothing but great memories uh, of that time. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, being in there painting those those murals on the wall. You like? <laughs> <laughs> I remember what you said. It was super funny. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna paint on the wall so these motherfuckers can't. Take it can't buy anything off. <laughs> you can't buy paintings. You have to take the walls out. <laughs> Look, you know, I, I did that here in here in Australia, and this guy cut the cut the, cut wall. the wall. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he didn't get my permission to to, to what saying you know, so um, he wanted to um he wanted to um uh, donate that thing to um some uh, museum and and uh, they contacted me to, to see if I gave permission and I said no. You got Banksy. <laughs> yes. They always take these doors and stuff from Banksy, right? When they, oh, when he yeah. when he paints I got, something. Yeah, I got Banksy, but but you know, like um, I I don't think that that'll go ahead because they they need my. Um, in Pramada, you know, to, to proceed. So, anyway, yeah, well, um, something, I find what? that very funny though that that someone actually did cut a wall. <laughs> and it was always your plan. They'll never do that, and someone actually did it. That that is kind of funny. Yeah, well, um, 
Um, well, I dealt you know, on art spaces, you know, because um, they just wouldn't do that. You know, um, mm. I did this in a commercial gallery. You know, kind of, I thought that they wouldn't do that too, but oops. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's I was funny. I I, I was um, um, oh, it's my turn. <laughs> oh, there you go. This is a, um, I saw this picture. This was like um, two days ago. It was Saturday. So the guy on the left is a very uh, good friend of mine, a childhood homeboy. Um, he has sickle cell, and um, and um, the book behind him says Lennox. Lennox, and that's about him and his son. That's a that's a book we. Um, it's a children's book we made. Um, it's like an adventure. Sorry. Yeah, I saw uh, I saw some images of the of this on Insta. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So so the, so it's a children's book that it's it's like an adventure story, but it's also uh, um, informative because it talks about sickle cell disease. Because a lot of people don't know anything about it, and um, and uh, you're right because t uh, Tupac. Sorry, um, I I heard about first time from Tupac. <laughs> oh, he dissed someone, didn't he? He dissed someone <laughs> when he said it. He dissed Prodigy, <laughs> another rapper. He said something like Prodigy died uh, not so long ago, a few years ago, which, uh -huh. the, which is a shame. But they had a, a, they were dissing each other, yeah, in rap yeah, yeah. So Tupac said something like, "Doesn't he have sickle cell? Should you sit down before you die or something?" So something like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, was, it was nasty. It was Pac, like, uh, Pac, him Pac, him Pac was a nasty battle. Sorry, come again. Hit him up. Hit him up. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he went after Biggie and Jay Z yeah. and Prodigy and Nas, all in that one track. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> Not one of jokes. It's it's ever, people who stood next to uh, Biggie or whoever got got uh, shot as well with uh, yeah. words, nasty yeah. words. Yeah. Yes, but the, uh, the the lady beside him is um, is Zinzi. She uh, actually wrote the book, and I did the illustrations with a friend of mine. Uh, we did it together, so it, it's right. pretty cool. And and um, uh, the place that they're standing in is Oscom. I think you remember Oscom, right? You went you went uh, didn't you swing by once? It's in um, Amsterdam, southeast. Uh, okay. It's a, like a creative space uh, with lots of um, uh, exhibitions and stuff. I think you oh. went there as well. Oh, I'm yeah. Not sure. it, it, it's quite big, several stories, uh, or it's upstairs. Oh, no, no, no. I, I that's think a, that's uh, the Black Archive. No, yeah, yeah. No, I think uh, maybe you didn't go there then. Maybe you're yeah. talking about Black Archives <laughs> or Balma Park Theater, maybe. But this is. Uh, this is this is it's pretty cool. It's it's like in the middle of a shopping center, uh, in a oh, predominantly uh, black and brown neighborhood. Right. Um, so it's it's really amongst the people. So people walk by and they they see uh, uh, a show immediately, and they can just come in for free. And uh, so this place is is my uh, expo is there as well. Uh, so you can see like a, a speaker behind her. So that's uh, a work I made. Um, no, I have to say it differently. I, I made a lot of um, like arcade kind of cupboards and wow. they, they all had different themes. And this one uh, has like one speaker in it and it, it plays like a three hour mix that DJ Love Supreme made for me. And it's, it's actually like paying homage to inventors. Like uh, when people say, when they talk about rock and roll, they never talk about Sister Rosetta Tharp, who's like almost yeah. Yeah. the the architect of rock and roll, and that's a black queer woman. So it's it's uh, pretty cool to make a, a, a art piece with all sorts of faces on it, that um, that yeah, pay homage to 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 uh, the architects of of a lot of musical styles, and so I have like ten uh, arcade style works 
that uh, talk about different things. Actually nine, because if you can see there's like this garbage uh, bin in between them. Can you see it? Yeah, the, it's got a white guy there. Yeah, yeah, that's Geert Wilders. That's that's our uh, oh, yeah, yeah. white supremacist over here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, and but it's littered with. Um, there are more people on it uh, that are fuckboys, and uh, and so I was thinking, I gotta, do I have to make like an arcade style thing to talk about these negative? Nah, they're not getting an arcade. They're they're getting a trash bin. So I painted <laughs> this trash bin. And so it's part of the show, but it's actually um, uh, awesome side too. Yeah. Yeah. So like when I was painting the others, like I had paint on my hands and I just wiped it off of that trash bin and then kept going, stuff like that. So yeah, well, um so you this, put it in, in a little corner. Like um over here, um, um I I made a career out of um you know out of Darkie's corner, I called it. And like um out of darkest corner. <laughs> yeah, well, it was it was the most insignificant, you know, like darkest place in in the in the show, and and um, that's where they put the blackfellas, you know, because yeah, yeah, we'd be we'd be at the afterthought. Oh, we haven't got any blacks in here. Let's put you know. <laughs> let's put them in the corner over here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, the worst, yeah, the worst space. You know. They didn't realize they were doing me a favor. You're know, like, uh, like if. If you get the worst space in, you know, in a gallery, you know, like, and you do something, you know, interesting in there, you know, like, everybody exactly. remember it. You know, so. But that's, but that's what, that's the culture that that uh, Farida and I like come from. Like hip hop yeah. culture has always been uh, seen as a fad, something that would go away, and just the music alone is is world is worldwide taking over everyone's earbuds. So. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. But the, I found the, the image funny because the 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 image of of my childhood friend and my creative partner, and then uh, a critical work with the trash bin behind, and uh, paying homage to the OGs uh, uh, next to it, and uh, having something for kids. Uh, it was all in one frame. So uh, it 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 quite literally showed the things that um, that my work represents. Yeah, yeah. So, but, well, your work is very playful too, too. So you know, like um, it is. Yeah, so. I've I've kind of learned because of you. You said something too that that I never forgot. Um, I showed you like one of the first animations um, at the dinner. It was like our last dinner with Bell invites, yeah. and I showed you like this eighty-four second uh, animation I made. I don't know if you remember. And you you looked at it and, and and you said something that I never forgot and it was is is pretty um, uh, eye opening for me. You said, "I wish I could uh, animate because uh, I could get away with far more things than I can do now." <laughs> true, oh it is God. true. It is true. I I actually I I took it to heart and I and I made some. Uh, poignant things <laughs> that that uh, that actually hit hard um but because it's animated yes people 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 like it it's like the same with south yeah. park and family guy and the simpsons yeah. you can poke fun at things but it's almost yes. like stand up comedy as well is, is, is you if you make it pop culture people listen to it um better than when yeah. it's uh, Oh, animation just, you know, it, it's like puppetry, you know, um, mm -hmm. um, like you can get away with just so much more, you like, um, like, um, if the, if the court jester could have been a puppeteer, you're like, he wouldn't have had his head cut off. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> so, yeah. So, those sort of things, you know, so. So yeah, well, I'm, 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 that's one of the things I really liked about your work. You know, like I really love those animations. That, you know, I, I, I remember encouraging you to, you know, to, yeah. to do more. That that was that was the thing that, that I, I thought. You know. Yeah, it helped. It helped. It's funny because because uh, I animate, but I but I I'm, I can't animate at all. <laughs> I'm not an animator at all. It's, it's it's the way that I do it is is like 
drawing one frame at a time it's it's pretty yeah. soul sucking so I, I try not to do it um, <laughs> too much well, no, do very short ones you like yeah, yeah 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 I do I do I try that uh, I try to do that um, but the thing is I um, I had like this big studio a few years back and then I had to leave it and so I worked at home uh, uh, very yeah, a few years maybe um, so I could do paintings but it's Kids were my kids were smaller then, so they were like walking past it and still wanted to touch it. Oh shit, still wet and stuff like that. <laughs> and 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 I, I was like infringing their space. So um, so I tried like to use A4 paper, smaller, and and right. try to do things that way and just scan it in. And that's how I I was like, okay, this is cool, but. It would be cooler if it moved <laughs> so that's how it started out of a necessity to 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 stay busy making stuff but um but it worked out because at some point people really uh gravitated towards that work yeah. so now i'm trying to get off it again <laughs> <laughs> oh, i have a studio now i can make bigger puppets. things again <laughs> puppets yeah that would be dope actually i'm gonna i'm gonna take this to heart as well <laughs> hey uh by the way i um i was very envious of you guys you you guys had the pandemic under control like australia and new zealand it seemed yeah. like you you already had festivals and stuff and then i saw like you have a mouse plague and a spider plague and then i was like ah okay no i'm good <laughs> uh, oh yeah well, well now we should talk about the environment what we all <laughs> yeah is yeah. that that killed the goddamn rivers, you know, like uh, you know, farming and that sort of thing. You know, they, they've, um, it's, there's a whole river system here that's just not there anymore. The you know, wetlands you know, just disappeared. The Aboriginal people you know, oh, still just fighting to try to get the people, the government to let some water come down from upstream. So I think so. That's a, the, one of the biggest environmental issues we've got here um, is water. You know, and the way that with, with fracking and that sort of thing, the, the, there's a, the Great Artesian Basin underneath, uh, you know, Australia. Like, um, it's it's probably the size of Europe that that thing, and and they they're going to like. Well, they're already letting people letting people, you know, frack there. So, yeah, who knows. Mm. So that's one of our biggest problems here. Oh yeah, well about Australia and the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. But, well, we're at the arse end of the world, you know, so the, not much traffic here. So um, yeah, it's uh, better regulated. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, um, and we had sort of hotel quarantine, yeah, you know, which I don't believe you had there. So um, no. <laughs> But yeah. we're, we're opening up now uh, as well because uh, more people get vaccinated here. So Yeah, yeah. Look, yeah I got my first jab the other day. Oh, sorry, Yuri? What did yeah. you want to say? Richard, you go ahead. Pardon? I interrupted you, please. Oh, no, I, I was just talking about getting my uh, coronavirus jab the other day, the vaccination. Um, vaccination. Oh, you already had them? Yeah. I had got my first um, Pfizer uh, vaccination. Um, I'm pretty happy about that. And, um, I'm, I'm hoping to travel. Um, I think everybody's really looking forward to travel again. And <laughs> although these yeah. conversations are nice, of course, uh, there's nothing um, like live meetings, right? Nah. People, uh, yeah. Can't wait to get back to, to Amsterdam. Um, Catch up with you, brother. Please yeah, do. man. You know you're yeah. welcome. This, this, yeah. this is your home over here. Oh, man. It's, it's Extra so spot. <laughs> we all look very much, uh, are all looking very much forward to that. Brian, Richard, thank you so much for this inspiring conversation. Great uh, to have you. Uh, keep safe, and uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we'll see each other soon live in Amsterdam or in Australia. Thank Goodbye. you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. And that's it for us today, uh, dear viewers. Again, a big thanks to Nardi, Janet, Maria, Emma, Richard, and Brian for joining us today. 
Thank you all for watching. And uh, we hope you join us for our next edition of Artists in Conversation, which will be uh, with artists from Hungary and the Netherlands. We hope you've learned something today, whether we're about community, sharing or dreaming, and uh, look forward to welcoming you at our next edition. Thank you.